Hey, how's it going, everybody? Sean here from Zoobox, and today we're going to be talking about 1997's House, or Husu, if you're Japanese. It was directed by Nobuhiku Obayashi. Uh, the screenplay was written by Chio Katsura, and it stars a bunch of Japanese actresses, which I won't try to... <laughs> I won't embarrass myself by trying to pronounce their names. Uh, there's a little short synopsis here. In an effort to avoid spending time with her father and his creepy new lover... Young Gorgeous resolves to visit her aunt's remote mansion with six of her closest friends in tow. So, this is an interesting movie. I had never seen this film before. Uh, it had always been kind of on my list, you know, uh, at least for the past decade. Because up until about 2009, it actually was not widely available in the United States. Uh, it was kind of a cult thing in Japan. When it came out, uh, it didn't get reviewed very well, but it developed, like I said, a cult following. And then there was like a manga and I think an anime maybe at some point uh, that was kind of built around the mythos of House and uh, what happens. It's kind of an abstract supernatural ghost story, uh, I guess would be the best way to describe it. It kind of reminded me a lot of something like a David Lynch movie uh, or, or more specifically uh, later David Lynch like 2000s forward, or if you had watched the most recent episode, or not episode, but season of uh, his Twin Peaks show, Twin Peaks The Return, uh, that's a very, you know, kind of subtle, full of metaphor and and uh, interesting visual stuff and abstractions, trying to make kind of this larger point. And I would say House kind of falls into that. So much so, uh, some of the imagery in House, I feel like David Lynch maybe even directly lifted when it came to some of his uh, Twin Peaks, the return stuff. I mean, there were moments where I was like, holy shit. Now, granted, they're not like trying to communicate the same idea, but uh, I felt the visual similarities sometimes to be really interesting, super interesting. It's, you know, it's, it's a, they, they describe the film as a horror comedy because it does have this kind of light silliness to it a little bit. It's very surreal. Um, everything feels, very authored and manufactured. Like everything feels like it took place on a set. Even when they have scenes that take place like outside, uh, there's like a matte painting behind them. They're not actually outside. So everything in the foreground feels uh, like you're watching something on a stage almost. It's kind of interesting. I think a lot of that has to do with uh, the specific tone. Probably there was budget concerns. I'm sure there's just production reasons why they did that. But it also made me uh, feel like I was watching like a piece of Japanese theater. You know, if you're if you're kind of familiar with some of like the the geisha shows, I can't remember. It's <laughs> it's eluding me at the moment, but like some of the their theatrical traditions uh, that that it kind of evoked. I mean, even from the very beginning, it's got this really it's really interesting kind of dream like quality. Even like the 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 lens has like the soft filter. The soft glow filter, everything's got kind of this dreamlike quality to it. And even the beginning scene, like him or the main character, her and her father are out like on their on their patio. And in the background, it's like this beautiful, almost painterly sky. And then there's these really bright colors in the foreground of, with flowers and, and greenery. And it makes this really interesting juxtaposition. And that was kind of what strung me along. Because like I said, like a lot of the movie is kind of abstract. It's almost, I wouldn't say it's hard to follow necessarily, but it almost feels like it's, it's working on dream logic, which makes what I've said about the, the way it was produced make sense. Um, you know, like it's like you feel like there's tons of impossible physics and geometry and, and the impossible rooms, the house itself that the movie mostly takes place in the aunt's mansion is, is very weird. And like the, it just doesn't make sense the way it's laid out. And then the way the characters, when they're running from room to room, like it feels like almost like the the house itself is like reconstructing itself. It's really interesting. There's a, there was a lot of layers. I mean, this was a first time watch for me, so I probably missed a lot, honestly. And I think some of that cultural distance about the way the mannered nature of some of it is probably lost on me a little bit. I would like to watch it again. I'd like to really kind of get into this movie. Maybe someday we'll do a full episode of Zoobox Goes to the Movies and really deep dive on House. Because I think there's a lot of interesting, cool stuff here. 
Um, just on the surface level, though, it, it's a pretty funny movie. Um, it's It's got this group of six girls that are all kind of archetypes for certain like kind of ways of life or certain types of being. And there, some of them are are more girlish than others. Some of them are more tomboyish. Some of them are musicians. Some of them are uh, like, uh, oh, like they know karate <laughs> or, or, or some equivalent. Uh, one of them's little there and they, they literalize it in their names. There's like uh, melody plays the piano. Kung Fu knows karate. It's so it's, it's, or knows martial arts rather. And it's, uh, so it's got that kind of going for it. It's, it's being obvious in some senses about the fact that it is kind of surreal and mannered and, and almost on the nose about certain things. But I think if I was from Japan, like I said, I probably would have picked up on a lot more, uh, of what it was trying to do. I would say this though. It is a very, it feels like a very forward thinking movie. It's got, it feels very modern in a way, uh, this kind of the way, not just the way it was made, but this kind of this deconstructive nature of the story itself and talking about kind of family lineage and where you fit in your family and how to kind of get over new things happening in your, in your life relative to your family and your line, maybe things that you don't like for a lot of the time. I thought I was watching something about a young girl coming to terms with the fact that her father was getting remarried in the story. Her mother died eight years prior and it had just been her and her father and they were kind of this unit. And then this new woman who I believe is called gorgeous and that she is, (laughs) uh, get together and she's kind of not happy about it, which is what gives her the impetus to want to go visit her aunt who is her mother's sister. And they had, they had kind of lost touch and she wants to reconnect with that part of her life. She needs some sort of closure with that, maybe to be able to move forward. And then when you get to the house itself, you find out that, you know, uh, her aunt is the matriarch of her family's line of her mother's like existence in a metaphorical sense. And, there's this, there's this kind of this notion of like pushing back against change or the, or, or something like that, something in there. And then the rest of the movie has kind of the structure of uh, the, the main girl, like figuring out who her mother was through like diaries and, and artwork and pictures. And as she's discovering all those things, the house kind of slowly awakens. And basically it, there's like kind of a slasher element to it where like the girls get picked off one by one. Um, some on screen, some off screen um, for some really, <laughs> some really interesting visual stuff. Um, at some point, some girl's head ends up in a jar, I think. Super interesting. It's, it's just, it was a cool movie. You know, I, I don't have a ton to say about it just because, it was a lot to take in on a first on a first viewing. And there's obviously so much metaphor at play that it it feels completely abstract at times and was even a little hard to follow. I I'll, I'll, I I totally say that. I'm um, granted maybe it was the circumstances I watched it, whatever, but I'm going to watch it again at some point. At some at some day I'll, I'll watch it again, for sure. Cuz I would really like to kind of get into what the movie is trying to accomplish because I was a little confused at the end of the movie, the way the movie resolves because it kind of resolves in the set in a way that is like the main girl ends up kind of taking the place of her aunt in this house, the matriarch of, of her family and her lineage. And, uh, she kills gorgeous or at least they visually represent that on screen. They she, like shake hands and, uh, gorgeous, get set on fire, <laughs> but it's not like a real fire. She's not really set on fire. It's like, just like, it's like a weird abstract imagery thing. So a lot of stuff going on. A cool movie. Uh, if you've never seen it, check it out. It's on uh, HBO max right now. It's part of their Turner classic movies section. It's uh, where they have a lot of criterion movies. House is part of the criterion collection. So yeah, cool movie worth checking out. I loved I loved the style. I love the style. It does there's so many cool little tricks and interesting things. Uh like I said, it reminded me a lot of something David Lynch would do. And so much so that I was like, "Oh man. 
David Lynch owes some people some money. He owes old Nobuhiko Obayashi some money. Maybe my two cents. I don't know. I tried to look up uh, the director's filmography, or I did look it up, and I just didn't. I honestly did not recognize any other movie. I had heard of House, mostly because that cover. It's got a very like provocative poster, and uh, so I'd heard of it, but never got around to watching it until now. Now it's done. All right. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening, everybody. If you'd like to know more about Zoobox, there's a bunch of links in the description for Facebook, for Instagram, for my personal Twitter. Also, if you would like to make a recommendation for one of these daily video reviews or maybe something that we could do in uh, give the old Zoobox goes to the movies treatment, put it in the comments. I'll throw it on the list. All right, everybody. You have a great one.